Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today we're doing something really exciting. We're uh, going to turn the ESP32 S3 into a mini AI voice assistant powered by ChatGPT and Eleven Labs. All right, so for this demo, I'm using three main pieces of hardware. First up, we've got the ESP32 S3 camera board with SD card support. Uh, this is basically the brain of our project. Now it's got a pretty powerful dual core processor and you know, more memory compared to the older ESP32 boards. The S3 version also um, comes with AI acceleration features, which means it's kind of built for running machine learning stuff like image recognition or wake word detection. And oh, of course, the onboard SD card slot. That's really handy for logging conversations or like storing extra files we might need later. Next up, we've got the INMP441 digital microphone. So this one's basically our ears, right? Now, unlike those simple analog microphones, the INMP441 uh, actually outputs digital audio directly over the I2S protocol, which means we get nice, clean, high quality sound without needing any external amplifier. It's, you know, pretty much perfect for voice recording and it works really well with the ESP32. All right, now let's talk about the speaker with an I2S DAC. So yeah, this one's kind of our voice, you know. Uh, the ESP32 can actually output audio directly over I2S to a small DAC and then that DAC drives the speaker. In this demo, I'm using the Max 98357A DAC to play the audio output. You can use any other I2S compatible DAC that works with your setup. Pretty cool, right? That's basically how we'll play back all the responses generated by Eleven Labs. And uh, yeah, you could totally use a small hobby speaker for this demo or um, even hook it up to powered speakers if you want better sound quality. All right, so now that we've looked at the hardware, let's uh, step back for a second and see how everything actually connects together. Think of this as the big picture. Kind of like a flow, you know? How our voice travels all the way from the microphone through the ESP32 up to the cloud and then comes back out as a spoken reply. All right, so here's the process in like really simple steps. Uh, first up, voice input from the microphone. So when I speak into the INM P441 mic, it basically captures my voice as raw digital audio. And then uh, this audio data is sent straight into the ESP32 S3 using the I squared S interface. Nice and clean, no extra amplification needed. Next up, speech to text using the Whisper API. Now the ESP32 S3 doesn't, you know, try to understand the audio on its own. That would be kind of too heavy for it. So instead, it just sends the recorded audio over Wi Fi to the Whisper API which by the way is this super powerful speech to text engine from OpenAI. Whisper basically listens to what I said and gives us back the exact words, but in text form, neat, right? All right, so once we've got the text, now comes the fun part, processing with ChatGPT. This is kind of like the brain of our whole setup. So yeah, that text from Whisper is sent straight into ChatGPT and then boom, it starts thinking about what we said. It analyzes the input, figures out the context, and then comes up with a nice meaningful reply in plain natural language. Pretty cool, right? All right, so once ChatGPT gives us the response, we're gonna pass that text over to Eleven Labs. Now, Eleven Labs is uh, basically a super realistic text-to-speech engine. It's what gives our assistant a human-like voice. So yeah, it takes whatever ChatGPT says and turns it into a smooth, natural sounding audio clip. Pretty amazing how real it sounds, right? All right, and finally, the last step, audio output through the speaker. So the ESP32 S3 uh, basically streams that audio it got from Eleven Labs back out through the I2S tag. And yeah, that's what drives our little speaker. And that's how the assistant, you know, actually talks back to us in real time. Uh, so basically, the flow is super straightforward. You speak into the mic, the ESP32 S3 sends it to Whisper 
to convert it to text, ChatGPT thinks, and generates a reply. 11 Labs turns that reply into speech, and then the ESP32S3 plays it back through the speaker. Easy, right? All right, now that we um, understand the flow and the block diagram, let's you know, dive into the code and see how all of this actually works on the ESP32S3. So right here, we're adding all the necessary libraries. And uh, these are the special audio libraries that let the ESP32 decode MP3 files and play them through the I squared STAC. Basically, the top part of the code loads everything we need. Wi-Fi connections, API handling, SD card access, and of course, audio playback. Now coming down here, these are the pins used by the onboard SD card slot of the ESP32S3. Then we've got these pins defined for the external DAC. That's what we use to output audio. And finally, here are the pins for the INMP441 microphone, which, you know, picks up our voice input. All right, so now here we uh, set up the recording configuration. Uh, basically, the recording duration is set to 5 seconds, which means whenever we start recording, we'll capture up to 5 seconds of audio. Uh, that helps, you know, keep the memory usage under control. Uh, next, the sample rate is set to 16,000 Hz. Now, that's kind of a sweet spot between audio quality and performance, especially for speech recognition. And then we've got the buffer size. This defines how much audio data we temporarily store in memory at a time before processing or sending it over Wi-Fi. This sets the audio resolution or how detailed each sound sample is. This means we're recording mono audio, not stereo. And this is the fixed header size of a WAV file. All right, next up, we set up the Wi-Fi connection. And now comes the really important bit, uh, the API keys. These are, you know, like your secret credentials that let the ESP32 talk to services like ChatGPT, Whisper and 11 Labs safely. Now let's actually see how we can get both of these one by one. All right. First things first, let's head over to 11labs.io and log in. Now, once you're in, go to the developer section. You'll see an option called API keys. Click on create key and uh, give your key a name. I'm just going to call mine test new for now. You'll notice a few toggle options below. We only need the one for text to speech. So go ahead and enable that. Then hit create key. Your brand new API key appears. Just copy that key and paste it into your Arduino code. Nice and simple. Now to get a voice ID, go to the text to speech tab. Pick any voice you like. And right there, you'll find its voice ID copy that too and drop it into your code. For ChatGPT, you'll need to go to platform.openai.com and log in. And then uh, click on dashboard and head over to the API keys section. Now just click on create new secret key and give it a name. Something like my test key. Once it's created, you'll see your brand new API key on the screen and uh, Make sure you copy it and save it somewhere safe because once you close that window, you won't be able to view it again later. Now, right here in the code, replace these placeholders with your actual API keys and the voice ID you copied earlier. Now, here we've defined the three main API URLs that our ESP32 will use to communicate with online AI services. This is the text-to-speech API from 11 Labs. This one belongs to OpenAI's Whisper model. And finally, this is the chat GPT endpoint. And finally, this line defines the voice ID that we'll use for text to speech in 11 labs, which we have checked a moment ago. In the setup function, we uh, initialize all the important stuff like the SD card, Wi Fi connection, and the I2S microphone. We also set up a pin for input, usually a push button or switch. All right, so now let's take a look at the loop function. Basically, the loop has two main jobs, playing audio and checking for any user input. So right here, we're checking if the physical switch or button is pressed. And if it is, we call this function. Now inside that function, 
there's another one called record audio and this is the one that actually uses the INMP microphone over the I2S interface to capture sound. All those recorded samples are stored in a buffer right inside the ESP32's RAM. Then uh, this variable wave size, it basically tells us how big the recorded audio clip is. You can totally check out and explore that function in detail if you want to see exactly how the recording part works. Alright, so here we're just doing a quick check. If the buffer turns out to be empty or you know if the recording somehow failed, then we simply exit early with an error. Alright, so here's what's happening. Uh, this function basically takes the recorded audio and sends it over to the speech to text or STT function, which uh, in our case is powered by the Whisper API. Whisper listens to that audio and converts it into plain text. If the transcription works fine, we print that recognized text right here in the serial monitor. Now that same recognized text is automatically passed to another function. And this one talks to ChatGPT. So yeah, ChatGPT takes that text, thinks about it for a second and generates a natural sounding reply, which will later convert into speech using the 11 Labs API. Well, uh, you can uh, go through the code yourself and see how everything connects together. It's pretty straightforward once you understand the flow. And if you feel like you'd want a full line by line explanation, just let me know in the comments. I'll be more than happy to make a detailed breakdown video for you.